Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a little balance of some hardcore fantasy news and then some more entertainment news, maybe leaning a little bit more towards the entertainment, but I find it all fairly interesting, including lies and deceit. But let's go ahead and jump in some of the hardcore fantasy news first. Subterranean Presses have announced a new Robert Jackson Bennett novel, In the Shadows of Men. This is described as ultra dark and seems to be of the more paranormal fantasy variety. I haven't read anything of this author, but one of the reasons I wanted to actually specifically talk about this release is I do plan to soon, though keep in mind soon here on my channel means like end of the year because, you know, I got a lot of books to get to, man. And you know how in the last fantasy news we talked about a Malazan update? Well, we have another one from the god of Malazan himself, Steven Erickson. He posted to Facebook, and so, Finney, 5.25 p.m. local time. The next few days devoted to a read-through, and then it's off to agents, publishers, etc. Am I pleased? Pretty much. Satisfied? I think so. Exhausted? Oddly enough, not at all. To write is to feed one's own soul. Here I am, full up. I really like that. That was like oddly deep and motivating. I don't know, that just makes me want to go right now. Thank you, Steven Erickson. But yes, it now seems that there are two Malazan novels quickly coming down the road. And as we talked about in the last episode of Fantasy News, it's been specifically noted that this one could actually be released earlier than expected if it really is so close to completion. Though, don't hang your hat on that. Sometimes books need to be drastically rewritten after their first draft is done. So let's, let's ease up on the brakes here and just be excited to see the progress is being made. Ease up on the brakes. Let's press down on the... You know what I mean? Damn it. Saba Tahir also announced a sky beyond the storm due out December 1st of 2020. Dungeons and Dragons is once again crossing over with Magic the Gathering, with the publication coming down the road of Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Inspired by ancient Greece mythology, this seems to be a new D&D &D, uh, Greek theme stuff, which I'm completely down for. That sounds really, really cool. I haven't done any ancient Greek set D, D campaigns in my life. I've done sci-fi general, Star Wars, modern, dark world, classic, 5e percentiles, all kinds of stuff like that, but I've never done a true traditional D, &D Greek mythology one. That's interesting. Again, I've never really played Magic the Gathering, but stuff like this, where it's pulled from established Magic the Gathering lore, which I've heard is quite rich, to just go ahead and build off a very playable game that I'm used to, 100% in for. Maybe one day I'll become one of these Magic the Gathering people, but until then, I'll just exploit its existence to help create other games I will enjoy. <laughs> and the keynote speaker for the 2020 Tolkien Lecture has been announced. From the Tolkien Lecture on Fantasy Literature Twitter handle, we had the tweet, where we're excited to announce that Rebecca F. Kwong will deliver the 2020 Tolkien Lecture at Primbroke College, Oxford, on Tuesday, 28th of April. And that is phenomenal to hear. There are very few authors I could think of as deserving as this uh, honor, I guess is the way to put it, as Rebecca herself. So I hope it's eventually posted somewhere and I'll be able to check it out because that's for sure something I want to be listening into. You will not believe how many times it took me to say that Twitter handle correctly. Now, I want to transition into some entertainment news real quick before we jump back into more like the hardcore fantasy news, but this is entertainment fantasy sci-fi news, but just hold up with me because I'm kind of pissed about this. Constantly online, we see the idea of brought up of another Back to the Future movie being made, a remake, so to speak. And this recent deep fake that went super viral, having Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland's face on Doc Brown's and Marty's, uh, basically reignited the flood of, oh, is it gonna happen with these two actors? We'd love to see it. And Tom Holland very innocently commented on the deep fake, basically saying like, it was really interesting and he liked seeing it being done. And yeah, he would as a like tip of the hat to this deep fake and the people who were so positive in response to it, maybe reshoot one scene with him and Robert Downey Jr. He thought that'd be cool. But he specifically notes that a full remake is not in the cards and he's saying that he's not what he's trying to do. Now, every headline is kind of just twisting that to be like, oh, possible Robert Downey Jr., Tom Holland, Back to the Future, when literally no one is saying that. 
No one, the people in charge of Back to the Future are saying no. They're not going to let a remake ever happen. Tom Holland's not even saying that that's going to happen. He maybe wants to do like a reshooting of a scene because he thinks that'd be kind of cool. No one is pushing to remake Back to the Future right now, from what I can tell. And I looked at a lot of different articles and the actual quotes they're pulling from. But I'd say about 70% of the articles I looked at took the liberty to just completely leave out any of the no one's actually trying to remake the movie part of it. And we had headlines at this that says Tom Holland confirms Back to the future remake talks have happened when in reality Tom Holland's saying like people have brought it up to him it's never been that serious it's not something actively being pursued and the deep fake thing was cool and maybe you know it'd be fun to do a scene that's it there is a legitimate argument to be made that maybe he wants to do this scene as a test to see if maybe they could then do a full remake later on and if that's the case that's a whole other story. Just as a massive Back to the Future fan, it's one of my favorite film trilogies of all time, it kind of annoys me to see these rumors constantly circulating online because I don't know how I would feel about Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland remaking it, honestly. I love the first three movies dearly, I don't know how I'd feel about these two boys remaking it. It's like, I would never have said yes until I heard these two guys would be the ones that they'd be like, let's do it with them. And that, still no. Maybe, but no, May no. May? No. Now there's been a lot of Witcher news in the last couple weeks that I've kind of skimmed over. I'm gonna leave an article linked in the comments down below that if you wanna get caught up on all of it, go right down there and check it out. I have a link, of course, to everything I talk about right down there. But I'm not gonna go over each and everything because it would just be a whole 20 minute video of me going over like, oh, the cinematographer was there. It's not important. But there's one big update that we definitely do need to talk about now that Vesemir has officially been cast. The actor Kim Bodnia has been cast as Vesemir, not Mark Hamill. Now, this is, of course, kind of a shocking update after the last few updates for this progression of casting have been Mark Hamill saying he was interested, people involved with The Witcher saying they'd love to have him, and reportedly maybe an offer being made, but everyone just kind of jumped the gun and assumed that meant it was happening. And it's specifically why in the last episode of Fantasy News we covered this, I said this. But I would like you to keep in mind and definitely remember just because a role is offered and both parties have expressed interest does not mean it will be done. Either the offer was too low, Mark Hamill had conflicts and couldn't commit to many seasons, just didn't want to commit something that is possibly going to be so long, we don't know. And also apparently it's come out it was offered to Michael Keaton and other known actors as well. So I think what is most likely is they weren't offering enough money or it's a rather long commitment and a lot of big name actors don't like to make that. But again, that is speculation from me. Don't actually say that's confirmed what happened. For all we know, what happened is Mark Hamill picked up the phone and screamed, never, and just hung up. Like we don't actually know. And in other controversial entertainment news, let's go ahead and jump into the Artemis Fowl reaction because the trailers come out from Disney and the like to dislike ratio speaks for itself and how people are feeling about this. I'm not gonna have much to say because Artemis Fowl was not a part of my childhood growing up, but I'd love to hear what you have to think about this trailer. Are you part of the people who are the thumbs up, which are still in the majority, or are you in the rather large thumbs down camp? Let me know in the comments down below, but without having a dog in this fight, I'm just not going to speak on it. Now, as someone who was into Doctor Who for a little bit, but then kind of just fell out after David Tennant, you couldn't replace David Tennant to me. We have some exciting Doctor Who news where apparently the Daleks will be making their return for this Doctor in the upcoming festival. Uh, special. So that's festive special? Festive special. That's neat. Good for them. You know, I think Star Wars could definitely learn some lessons from Doctor Who and how they've maintained their franchise. Well, not really betraying any of the original lore. They've just taken extreme liberties at times, but they've still stayed fresh and interesting, it seems, from the outside looking in for their fan base. So good on Doctor Who for that longevity. I know this latest couple seasons have had their moments of controversy. I, I, I don't really know how it's doing now, but it definitely seems like the fans I know are very happy with some latest Doctor Who stuff. Now, in some quickie news, we're going to get out of the way before we wrap it up here. It seems that the Why the Last Man adaptation has cast its lead role. Ben Schneitzer has apparently replaced Barry Cogan as the lead. I don't know who this person is. I accidentally misread it as Ben Schwartz when I first read it, and that was confusing, but nope, it's not him. It's this guy. And apparently Mark Ruffalo is in talks to be involved with the upcoming Disney Plus She-Hulk TV show. I shouldn't say TV show. I should just say series. It's not going to be on TV. It's going to be on Disney Plus. That is going to be something for the rest of my life I get wrong. And as of right now recording this, I don't know when it's going to end. The Lightbringer books are on sale on Audible. I will keep an update in the comments to let you know if they are still on sale by the time this video is released, but I know a lot of people are very interested in starting the series now 
now that it's officially done. So yes, right now on Audible, they are on sale. And if you have some credits, they're the same one credit. But if you are one of the people who uses cash on Audible, which I don't recommend, it's a better deal if you actually signed up. I do have affiliate links. Don't use it if you don't want to. Either way, you're not bothering me. But yeah, they're currently cheaper. And in the final bit of fantasy news we're going to talk about here today, I want to talk about the Baldur's Gate 3 gameplay that was released at a live event. Baldur's Gate at PAX 3 had some gaffes in their gameplay, but I actually really respect the way this has been handled and released. This was not one of those situations where the game developer just had a pre-made trailer that was trying to lie to you and say it was actual gameplay. No, this was legitimately, obviously because of the mistakes, someone just playing the game. And from that angle, I have a lot of respect for these developers because it's really easy to buy into the like, eh, let's just have this pre-made watchdogs type thing where the game looks a million times better than it is going to be at release. And don't get me wrong, these are some pretty big goofs in the game, but they've been open about this game not being finished. And I don't know, I I'm actually kind of proud of the gaming community as well, because the majority of people I have seen commenting on this online are just saying how they appreciate the genuine, thank you for showing us your actual game. You noted it's not done, so we're not going to be harsh on it for having these mistakes in it. And some of them were kind of funny. Objectively, some of them were kind of funny. This is actually really effective though in making me excited for the game, because I felt like what I watched was the real experience I'm going to have. In fact, the experience I'm going to have is better than what I watched, so I'm in. And that will be where we end today's episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. From the Tolkien liter from Tolkien literature on fantasy Twitter page. From Tolkien literature from Tolkien lecture on fiction. From the Tolkien Tolkien lecture on fantasy literature. Okay. From the Tolkien Lecture on Fantasy Twitter handle. From Tol from the Tolkien <laughs> Wow, what the fuck? <laughs> from the Tolkien <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tolkien Lecture on Fantasy Literature Twitter handle. We had the tweet. From the <laughs> From the Tolkien Lecture